three, two, one, podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to my tasting flight. This is Beer Coaster Mike. Last but not least, in this week's episode of Sit Your Ass Down on the Bus and Have Beer, something like that. I don't know. We'll figure out the title later. <clears throat> the beer I'm going to try is from Riverwalk Brewing Company out of Newburyport, Massachusetts. And the beer that I'm trying is the Citra Bus. The name comes from them using Citra hops as well as Columbus. This is a pale ale. The ABV on this beer is a uh, 4.9. So it would be, um, what do the young folks say now? This would be crushable. <laughs> I'm for sure for something like that they say it's lit as they say the beer's lit <laughs> and holy crap is it light wait till you see this guys um, their it's website ridiculous. is riverwalkbrewing.com oh. whoa the hell was that that was me doing a drum roll it's yellow. It is so yellow. Is he yellow? See, Mike's got the pint glass. He is rocking the pint glass, man. Alaska Brewing Company. I think uh, it's just you, Tony. I know. This is um. They're in the back of the shelf. Courtesy of Crazy Dave. I did a rod trail. Nice. So it is yellow. So yellow. It's crazy. It looks like. Lemonade. I got like a pinky finger. I've had about half a pinky finger dissipating, but it's a little little bit soapy on the top. I can smell lemon before I even even get close, um, you know, too close to the glass. I can just lemon is just kind of permeating this whole area. Hmm. It smells a little bit like a lemony cough drop. There's something kind of um, malty and medicinal about the lemon mm. aroma. Oof. You don't want to use that word. Medicinal? <laughs> well, beer is my medicine. <laughs> All right, touche. <laughs> I definitely do enough self-medication. Um, yeah, this it's a... Um, um, particular type of cough drop that I'm thinking of, but it's it's like a very like a lemon, like a malty, <laughs> uh, menthol, like a this lemon kind of a little bit piney. Ooh. Yeah, there's like a piney spiciness, like Ricola. <laughs> Ricola. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is not it. Oh, wow. You lose. You get nothing. It's like honey and lemon. Some pine. Very. <clears throat> I, I like the smell. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's kind of a. It, it's a very pleasing aroma. Kind of a very like bright lemoniness that kind of wakes up your senses a bit. So I'm going to take a sip. Take a sip. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that is quite hoppy. Whopping. It's got uh Is it jacked up? Is it is there a jacked up flavor profile? <laughs> Someone's been reading the marketing speak. <laughs> um, it has a quite, I mean, quite a bit of hops for a pale ale. It's a, um, it, it's bitter. It's it, it's it's bitter, but still lemony.
it's got a really kind of refreshing <clears throat> taste to it. You want to take another sip? It's kind of light. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of hops in there. I think they're just trying to, it's a beer that kind of showcases the, the two hops. There's not much in the way of anything else. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Multi lemon. I'm trying to think of what I would pair with this. Um. I think some lamb. Hmm. Like some lamb shanks, some maybe a little bit of mint uh, might go pretty well with something like this. Maybe some uh, Yukon gold potatoes. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, it did say that it would pair well with a fancy dinner. So that, that's about as fancy as I get. You and Those your different your kind of meat and potatoes. <laughs> your lamb shanks and your mint jelly. <laughs> um. Huh. The malt is super super light in this beer. Uh, all right, let's go straight to the ratings here. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Super Looks like relax. these guys are only available in New England. Huh. Oh, yeah. They don't Never distribute outside of New England. Nope. They go as yeah. far south as Rhode Island, and that's it. Huh. And as far north as Maine. Yeah, that's New England. Banger. <laughs> and I see that they are a part of the Massachusetts Brewers Guild, where... My cousin is the executive director. Oh. You don't say. Yeah, she is on the backyard beer tasting. Oh, that's right. That I sent you. Katie, the other Katie. Other Katie, Katie Oliver. It's the Katie that I got really. Yeah, I got the Katies confused. I think. <laughs> now, if he was in Kentucky, <laughs> right? And he was marrying. <laughs> Right. Katie. If he was marrying Katie. I would have thought <laughs> nothing of it. But, yeah. I apologize to all our Kentucky <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble now. <laughs> First, it's racism. Now it's. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so the ratings here: one thousand and twenty ratings. Uh, wow. Three point six nine. Not too shabby. I didn't mention this beer is 45 IBUs. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, popular places to drink this beverage is nowhere. No, there's one popular location. It's the Sixth Gear Cask and Kitchen in Boston, in Boston, Massachusetts. Nice. Sixth Gear. Sixth Gear. You been there? You know what? I have not. Have you heard of it? Uh, I have not. Uh, new American restaurant, wine bar, and cocktail bar. No, doesn't look like my... Sounds like bar. a hipster joint anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Sixth gear. I bet you they have lamb shanks and Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Very so there you have it, folks. My uh, river walk... Only available in New England, Citra Bus. <clears throat> Hop on! Hop on board. And sit y'all Get on down. the bus, bus, bus. Cool. I think that, that's about it. Are we going to roll, roll, roll right into last call? Yeah, let's or... roll into the last call. Cool. All right. Uh, well, here we go. Live! All right, folks. You heard it. It's the last call. There it is. So, so no, uh, no bonus mic, bonus beer no. mic this week. No, 
I, I do have a little extra time on my hands, so who knows? Maybe you'll you'll <laughs> actually get a backyard beer tasting out of me. Hey, that would be a good a good excuse is to don't, do a backyard beer tasting. Don't play on back my heart. porch with Stacy's mom. What do you think? Yeah, there you go. He's got it going on. <laughs> so okay, so last call. We uh, we're gonna do our ratings here. Uh, Toby, I believe you are up first with our fermentation conversation beer. The Citra ass. Citra ass. Damn. damn. What you think? Shut I'll up. say before you start that my second series of sipping after it's warmed up a bit were quite a bit different. But yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I just had a <clears throat> quick sip, and yes, it is different. I'm actually seeing some sediment. Just had a member berry sip. There's some sediment floating around in the bottom. Wow. Is that from South Park? <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. Sit your ass down against the grain. So upon taking another sip here just before giving my rating, it, it thickened up a little bit and it got a little more, like a little bit more mouthfeel. But there is this harsh kind of something in the back of the throat, um, which makes me, which reminds me that okay, this is a double. Because before I know, Mike, I agreed with you before. You were like, ah, I wouldn't really say this is a double, but now I feel like having time to maybe warm up a little bit. It's it does definitely feel a little bit more like a double. Um, so it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more syrupy. But that might be because it's a little less carbonated at this point but uh it's pretty tasty and um i, I don't regret spending 15 dollars on a four pack so i'm gonna give it a four i, I kind of dig it it's good it's got you paid great what 15 dollars 15 for a four pack of the one pint cans i paid 12.99 oh my god i win <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah yeah, uh, four four pints. I uh, I dig it. I would, I'd get it again. It's not bad. It's a little different, you know, than the typical double IPAs that I'm used to down here in San Diego. But yeah, they kind of go a little against the grain. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, oh, I see you did that. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, cigar sitting Guayavera. <laughs> this one. <clears throat> I can see how it would turn some new some newbies off. Like people that are just getting into craft beer and they see that it's a pale ale. I would not recommend this to a a person that's experimenting with craft beer because it's not the gateway. No. It's <laughs> it it's along kind of along the lines of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It it has that kind of dirty malty a uh, little bit of harshness. It's, um, but yet it's still kind of clean. If that makes any sense, uh, and my, I think it's drinkable, but it is kind of a little bit more on the earthy, spicy uh, side. Gotcha. Um, with a little bit of like a fruity floral nose. So it smells really good, but yeah, it does have a little bit of a harshness for a pale ale. Um, but it's, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, I would put it along the lines of uh, Sierra Nevada, though. So I'll give it a four. I dig it. Can you dig it? Why don't you uh, <clears throat> throw in the last uh, fancy beer that you've had in the last, like, maybe two weeks or so? Like something that jumped out at you. Ah, yes. <sighs> Um, something that I was impressed by. Let me see if I can add any five piners down here. We did have a, well, I did like the, um, the hopster pot from, uh, was it brewed with lobster? No, it's. The Hopster Pot from Thorn Brewing here in San Diego. 
Um, it's their hazy IPA. It's their New England style IPA. And I gave it a four and a half on untapped. And it's just, uh, I got it in a, in a mix pack at Costco. It was amazing. So, yeah. There you go. Hopster pot. I'm, I was thinking of doing it as a uh, backyard beer tasting. So you might see a more in-depth uh, review of that soon. So, Cool. Yeah. What it. about you, Tony? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, I had the uh, Bad Sons Brewing, uh, Bad Sons Beer Company, Mischief IPA. And I'm really enjoying the state that uh, Connecticut beer is in right now. You know, you have – when I think Cause back to about like – Connecticut? Because I'm in Connecticut. You think back to like – And you are the official, unofficial Connecticut beer guy, right? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Beer representative or something like that? We'll, we'll go with that, yeah. The unofficial, okay. official Connecticut beer <laughs> representative. Um, and you know, Bad Sons has been hasn't been open a full year yet, and um, one of the things that they did, uh, actually not Bad Bad Sons was a part of it, but and I definitely want to try this at some point with um, some of my beer buddies. But you, they did a blind beer tasting at a local event uh, down at the Blind Rhino in Norwalk, and it's a very cool idea. Uh, great concept because i've you know you guys know that i've always been into the pumpkin ale uh tastings and you guys yeah. have, you guys yeah. have a, port, a porter challenge there um mm. kind of a fun thing so you you get a bunch of friends together and you say we're doing a style and you don't even tell them what style but like everyone kind Ooh, of provides like, like a certain something and you don't know what everyone's going to bring maybe like if toby if you're going to run it like you know like you know what everyone's going to bring but then even you like you figure out some sort of like next step where you can kind of confuse yourself or you know the beers that you're drinking and yet you don't know what you're voting on so what they did down in the blind rhino is uh they're doing ipas and they said it's gonna you know they they charge tickets for it and you get a opaque cup like so there's red and there's like yellow and green and blue so you don't even see the beer and you're allowed 12 tastings and you don't know what 12 tastings you're going to get. So you try them, and then you say, you know what? And they, they hand you three, like, poker chips. And they say, okay, which ones do you want to vote on? And so you don't know the breweries that are involved, and you don't know, mm-hmm. you know, because you know, there's no biases whatsoever. You, and you can't even see the beer. So technically, if, like, one's hazy or one's clear, you're like, oh, man, this one's hazy. This one's going to be juicy, or it's, this one's clear. It's going to be clean and filtered you just go in on smell and taste and like finish so you say oh i want to put like these two chips into the blue cup or like i'm gonna go purple and green and red and you just whatever uh Mm -hmm. not this beer in particular but bad sons not sure which one ended up being i think second place in this blind beer tasting of 12 different beers where you didn't know the brewery or you didn't know um which one of the even the breweries, even one of the beers that they, because obviously breweries will make like more than one IPA, mm-hmm. and it's just a cool concept. It's a blind tasting, like no biases whatsoever. But it's it's fun. Well, you can I'd kind lo- of figure out how to do it. I would love that for uh, like if the BJCP judges had to do that. Yeah. You know, I think that would I I, I would I, I don't want to bad mouth, you know, because I really don't know what goes on. But I think it, it, there's an un like a subconscious level of bias there if you know the brewery and the, the beer you know but if, yeah. if, if you're completely if that's taken out of the the uh the equation uh i, I really think it would make a big difference you know right like so. if if you were doing a tasting with some friends and let's say like if toby if you knew all the breweries involved well then you have a friend go in and like switch them all up so that right. he, he has like the decoder ring that says like oh actually red is this and green is that so what you think is what you're drinking is not what you're drinking and then you're voting blind too so just right. a cool concept for anyone out there that uh wants to give a oh, that's cool a try Very so cool. these guys were involved with that you know 
Connecticut Beer did a, an event down there, and it was really cool. I when Bad Sons first opened up, um, I I didn't. I heard the the brewery was beautiful, and I heard they were kind of still figuring out their their styles. But after listening to that episode, um, actually, I'll give a quick shout out to. Uh, Full Pours Radio. They do a, a, a podcast as well that I've been listening to. They they did a live feed of this Blind Beer Awards, and uh, very cool. Uh, you know they've they've honed in their recipes, and for the Mischief IPA, I'd say it's a good beer. It, it's it didn't knock my socks off, but it's uh, a, it was a four pack of sixteen ounce cans, and price point was like I think it was like eleven dollars, not bad. Yeah, it's a, I would get this again. Um, I know that they do uh, other kinds of IPAs. I'm kind of curious. I, I kind of want to try more of what they offer because if they're winning blind or becoming, you know, one of the highly rated guys in the blind beer tastings, then you know, it's it's definitely worth trying again. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna give them uh, a four. Uh, I think it's, they're solid brew. Uh, you know, props to CT Beer and I'm definitely would be interested in trying some of their other offerings as well. Nice. Uh, I just noticed that every single brewery, well, except for Cigar City making their collaboration appearance before, all the other breweries are a new brewery on the show this week. Nice. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, quick, uh, fa- fun brewery that I've, uh, beer that I've drank in the last two weeks. Um, Mast Landing Brewing Company. Uh, my sister had brought down. Oh, I'm not sure where they're from. I should have known that. Uh, I think they are from. Uh, they're they're distributed in Maine in Massachusetts. I maybe I'll find it before the end of the show. What's oh, the name of the brewery? Westbrook, Maine. There you go. Mast Landing. Huh. Out of Westbrook, Maine, and. Okay. My sister brought down um, the Gunner's Daughter, a 5.5% uh, milk stout with uh, peanut butter, coffee, and dark chocolate. Woo! Wow! Amen. Like wow. going to church. No way! Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> peanut butter, dark chocolate, and coffee? Yeah. My gosh. It's legit. So, shout out to Mass Landing Brewing Company. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. <clears throat> Mike. Yeah, for me, the um, Against the Grain. Wow, this, this is your different... This is uh, not your regular double IPA. And on that second series of sips, when it was warmer... The beer did actually get bigger. It it tasted mm-hmm. like Toby mentioned, like oh, it's, it's definitely a double IPA. When it was colder, you really couldn't even figure out what style it was. Uh, but as it got warmer, um, everything kind of stepped up. The, the the flavors and the bitterness and everything just seemed like it got kind of elevated as it got a little bit warmer. I really liked it though. I liked that it was different. Um, I wasn't expecting that, you know, double IPA. It just, uh, I'm I'm gonna give it a four just because it was so different. But I think it's like, I mean, it was really solid um, as far as flavor goes. Uh, really kind of interesting aroma. So yeah, I'm I'm giving it a four. Um, just for originality you know yeah oh for sure i i want to see if i can find some more stuff from these guys yeah i'm always looking like i remember when i went to gabf the one time i went to gabf back in 2013 i was so excited i went to the section where like all the southern breweries were and i was like ah so like I never thing, get hard to get right yeah, yeah. I, I never get any of these breweries and here they are of course, Gina was like, calm down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's like 12 breweries here, each offering like two or three beers. <laughs> Pace yourself. Pace yourself. But yeah, it was, uh, I don't know if 
well, I'm pretty sure Cigar City was there at the time, but there was all these like, what's the turtle one? Uh, from Ter was a Terrapin, yeah, from oh, Georgia or something like that. Yeah, it was like breweries like that. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't get these out in California or Nevada. It's like, ah, oh, so excited. But yeah, so it's it's exciting to see you know breweries from Kentucky and Florida and stuff like that making it out to California. I think it's it's yeah. great. Uh, for my second beer this evening, the Riverwalk Citrabus. Um, it was a pale ale, had the hops, kind of an IPA, but it was it was really light. It was kind of like a, you know, hop juice kind of beer. This is kind of like a hop lover's lawnmower beer. You know, it had such. Um, it was is jacked up, is what you mean to say. It was jacked yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> jacked up lawnmower beer. It's um. It had a really um, lemony um, hop ho uh, hoppiness to it, uh, but really kind of light. It's easy drinking. You you, you, you want to take another sip, but it it's got a whole hell of a lot of hops in it. Um, I like it, and I would definitely get it again. I don't know. Did I get? can't remember if this came in a four pack or a six pack i think it might kept come in a four pack um oh, i don't know what to rate it it's good i'm just kind of i'm in a good mood right now i kind of want to rate it higher than i probably should but i'm going to give it three and a half all right but it's pa it's a very palatable pale ale and it's definitely on the hoppier side of the, the pale ales, but it's still kind of a light crispness to you want to keep drinking it. So good job, Riverwalk. <laughs> and that's nice. it. Nice. That's it. That's Anything it. Fa fancy that you've drank in, Mike? Uh, I can't say that it's fancy, but I, I went, we went up to um, whatever sticks out in your heart. Uh, Lake Ossipee. Uh, New Hampshire, uh, visit some friends just for kind of like half a day. It was like a couple hour drive. Um, I grabbed uh, some local beer, it's the 603 Brewery, uh, which is the area code for uh, a lot of New Hampshire, um, at least southern New Hampshire. And um, I got the Winnie Ale, which is actually an amber, but for some reason that beer just kind of hit the spot on the campgrounds like i i didn't want another ipa i wanted something local i wanted something that was a little bit different and this beer just kind of hit the spot for me you know Spoke it's just a amber ale and uh it's called winnie ale w-i-n-n-i okay. and uh yeah it was good i wouldn't say that it, you know it was fancy or out there or anything it was just that's it um it wasn't jacked up no, it wasn't jacked up at all. It was mellow, uh, easy drink in, but you know something a little different. Had a nice little sweet maltiness, but it was still nice, nice, uh, nice. And hit cold. the spot. Yeah, hit the spot. made you happy. Around, around the camp, good campfire beer. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I'm telling you, these like, the, easy drinking beers are are gonna be a thing. Yeah, the next thing, huh? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't doubt it. You know. Because it, it felt like they were trying to get so big and so bad for so long. And now mm -hmm. it seems like they are kind of backing off. And, all right, let's see. Then the Session IPAs, kind of a wave of the Session IPAs came. And, yeah, I could I could definitely see that happen as far as yeah. beer trends go. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to say, too, that it's not necessarily about not about the beer all the time sometimes it's it's about that experience of when you're having that beer that can make all the difference as well you know yeah like sitting maybe that beer wouldn't have been i wouldn't have thought anything of it if i was you know doing something else but just hanging out at the campgrounds there it just you know putting some stuff on the grill it just i don't know it, it just was the right beer at the right time you know yeah, sometimes when I come home, I've been drinking. Uh, uh, they used to be Banded Horn Brewing, but uh, now they're called Banded Brewing. They're uh, they're Pilsner. I just yeah. been coming home, and 
I brought a six pack when I was up in Maine a few weeks ago. It's just turn on the grill, grab a, grab a pilsner. Just kind of nice little yeah. moment to just enjoy, relax. Yeah. yeah. I do have to revisit some pilsners and lagers because I I would I would like to find more that I would you know like so and I get a feeling that that's going to be coming pretty soon especially if some of these breweries start you know focusing on that mm. that kind of stuff. Carl Strauss has a good uh, pilsner right now called Follow the Sun. Okay. Uh, I took it with me when I went to Joshua Tree National Park out here and took a cool photo of it at the campground and. They, they were stoked on it. They said they were going to use it on their Instagram. I don't know if they ever did, but. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Cool, man. Uh, shout outs. You got any shout outs? I got some shout outs. Yeah. Okay. Shout them out. Untap shout outs. Let me give a shout out to Phil Parrot. Because he has an exclamation mark. <laughs> David DeVore. Parrot. Justin Cox, Bitsy with two T's, Bitsy, R. Alex, and Elite, Elita P. El, Elite, Elita P. All right. Elita P. Cool. And of course, uh, Jose Ortega and Tiffany Alvord and Charlie Thorston. Tiffany and Charlie, aka yeah. Chips and Guac. Yep. Yeah. Chips and guac. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'll say a quick shout out. Um, I mentioned them briefly before, uh, but a new podcast that I'm also checking out is called FullPoresRadio.com. Um, they're primarily Connecticut. They're Connecticut based, and they've been uh, interviewing a lot of the newer breweries around the area. And like I said, they did an episode a couple of. Uh, couple weeks ago that had to do i mean I, I thought it was awesome you know it wasn't very structured or, or you know interviewed interviews or anything like that but they did a like a live feed from the blind beer awards down at the blind rhino in norwalk connecticut and uh the guys that are are putting this show together they're um they're new they're they haven't been open haven't been open haven't been doing anything they've been like i think they started eight months ago looks like 10 months ago looks like um yeah. they only have about 20 episodes and it's uh, just kind of kind of good uh, a good listen you know usually it takes about an hour or so but yeah give them the try fullporesradio.com cool sweet what's you mike uh well shout outs no i'm i'm not ready for that today um <laughs> i i didn't prepare myself let me see if i can pull something up real quick if you if you got just a moment just a moment. I don't know if it's going to come up or not. Mm, probably pull it up quicker on my phone. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to give a shout out to Pat Oswald. <coughs> also, uh, Bastone Brewery, Todd Alstrom. <laughs> Yep. Todd Alstrom, huh? Yep. Wow. Give me a uh, shout out to the Alstrom brothers. Woo. Also, throwback. Andy Murphy. Andy Murphy. Darkness. Andy Murphy. Andy Murphy. <laughs> Jeff uh, Allworth. And. Sam Calgione. Greg Cook. <laughs> no. Sam uh, Cook. Uh, Gemma Wilson and the Happy Hour guys. That's good for now. Oh, the Happy Hour guys. Yeah. Uh, Rob Johnson from uh, well, Craft Beer Guys. <clears throat> cool. That's it. That's all I got. All right. So, that's it. See, that about see you next wraps time. Up our show for this week. Citra ass damn. Hope you enjoy On the bus. Citra. That's right. Uh, join us again. I'm not sure when. Uh, but we'll be drinking beer. And there'll be some kind of theme attached to it of some mm -hmm. sort. It won't be well, our show. It'll be their show. Yeah, it'll be We're their just going to be drinking it. And we since... Are.
I don't know if Tony was here when we said it, but this is our season finale for season nine. Oh, yeah. Well, and so, uh, let's next put time we'll be to bed. Yeah. So next will be our season ten premiere. Wow, that's crazy. And I don't know. We usually do like when we do the premieres. That's when we do like the the number the, the is award. the theme. Oh, sometimes, yeah. We but do that sometimes. In a year from now, we will hit our 10th anniversary. So I think that we should wait till next year, if we're still around. Okay. And do a 10 theme as our, like, 10 full years of doing the show. Okay. Our, our like 10th that. anniversary. I'm in. Okay. Challenge so, accepted. We don't know what our t- season 10 premiere will be, but we keep talking about doing an NPR style show. So maybe we'll work on that, but I have no idea what kind of beers to get that would fit in with the NPR theme. Maybe we can yeah. throw in a, like a collaboration show. Yeah. You know, in honor yeah. of uh, be a, good one. a certain wedded bliss that will be happening. In there you world. go. Yes. There you go. I like we'll do, this. We'll do another collaboration show. I like it. Sounds Coming good. together. Yes, I do. Have, I picked up a beer just recently called uh, Ninja versus Unicorn. That seems like <laughs> something that we have to fit in there. Yes, somehow. Because where the hell are you going to find a beer like that ever again? Ninja versus Unicorn. Pipe works. I, I've had that. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they right. have great labels, by the way. They do have great labels. Yeah. I like the, the clo- All right, folks. Cl- close encounters. I know that good one, too. Yeah, I just I had that one just recently, too. That's a good one. <clears throat> Cascadian uh, Dark. It was a black IPA or something, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. All right, you guys. Good show. Yes. See you next time. See you next time on the Beer Coasters Podcast. Cheers. Balls, Mary. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, the can and the glass don't really cheers too well. Or the two cans together. Two cans together. Two cans, Sam. Two cans, Sam. All my nose. All right, Paul's America. All right, guys. Cool. We got a show. We did a show. Did a show. Yeah. Drank beer. We talked about it. beans why are we giving a shout out to one of the Austin brothers i you know i didn't have time to look to see <laughs> like the notifications thing has changed quite a bit and it used to be notifications for people who had like are you talking about twitter and contacted with you and now they just kind of throw freaking hey this person that has way tweeted more something than you tweeted something yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> So I kind of messed that up, but I didn't have time to really kind of sit through it. So. Too much pressure. Yeah. But I do follow Pat Oswald on uh, Twitter. He's, yeah, he's a good guy. I like him. <clears throat> I love him. There's in that one movie where he like he's yeah, in where he's, the garage, he's a rat. and he like he brews his own like. Uh, basically, he's got like his own distillery, <laughs> and he had um, this spirit that he brewed. I think it was called like Mose Eisley, <laughs> or uh, what the hell was it called? I forget. But it was like bourbon, right? And so she comes over, and I think it's Charlize Theron is is the other character in the movie. She comes over, just like, hey, you got. <laughs> You get any more of that Star Wars juice? And, she, and he says, "What?" He says, "It's small batch bourbon, you fucking hillbilly," or, or something, something to that effect. He says it better than that, but just the way he said it, it's so great. It's like it's small batch bourbon, <laughs> you fucking hillbilly. It's, it's good, but he's great. I love him. Yeah. His filibuster is classic. 
You did a filibuster? Yeah, you see that? No. For what? Uh, on Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> he did a Star Wars filibuster? Yeah. Oh, man, that's nice. He's awesome. What, did he stand there for six hours talking about Star Trek? I see you pull it up here. I saw a guy at Disneyland and his shirt said, Star Wars number one fan, and it had a picture of the USS Enterprise. <laughs> wow. I was like, yes! That's the best shirt I've seen all day. My brother, like, he sent a text, like a group text to all my family. And he, it was the, this, and he said, may the fourth be with you. <laughs> and my older brother's like, that's Star Trek, you idiot. Like, <laughs> come on, man. You know, he's just <laughs> being <Messing> stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, All right, folks. Yeah, so I mean, um, we'll think of some theme for next next go around. Yeah. If you want it, I like the collaboration theme uh, idea. Let's see if we can find an FC. That'd be great. When when is your big event happening, Tony? October. Oh, okay. So we got a little bit of time. For that we can wait a little bit if you want i mean <laughs> and, and not for nothing but with your schedules if you guys want to do more shows let me know yeah yeah, yeah. I, might be, I might be up for some more shows now for a while so. i just need to dedicate more time to editing that's that's been my problem is i've just been really slacking on the editing getting the shows out oh mike i need a wrestlemania picture <laughs> Okay, I could do that. Or, or WWF, whatever. Yeah, no problem. Sold. Uh, and then... Do some kind of hop, slam, pile driver. Yeah. Hulkamania. Jimmy like Superfly Hulkamania. is a bottle actually <laughs> flying off the... Yeah. With there's the a... glasses. And there's a can on the... laying on the mat. <laughs> It was like that. What was that one boxing one? We had like a boxing one, right? Where that was the like one that the, Tony, that was like the first the, one the that Tony was gloves. on. Was that, uh, yeah. Beer Hurts? Yeah, Beer Hurts. <laughs> beer Hurts, yeah. That's, it's got the gloves. <laughs> uh, a good one. And they had the uh, uh, Gord Ale Combat. That was another yeah. fighter one. Yeah. The pumpkin getting punched in the face. Gord fellas was pretty awesome. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was good. I, I love that. the picture of all three of us for all. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, I put the the link to that filibuster if you guys want to check that out. I'm not sure. Cool. If I think I've seen it before. Is it like a stand-up routine that he does? I think I think it's in Parks and Rec, and he just starts and he just talks for like oh, eight, okay. eight minutes right. straight. That's funny. I wish I could All find right. that line from that movie. 